last month or two for you? What's, what's this been like? It's been uh, a drastic change in my schedule, um, obviously. Uh, you know, I, I start at like 7 in the morning, and I'm not getting home till 6 p.m. Um, just with lifting, with football, until about noon. And then, you know, basketball starts at 1, get done about 3.30. And then, of course, uh, since I'm kind of behind and I'm skill level with just juggling both, um, I'm getting extra shots up and extra work after practice. So, yeah, just a drastic change in my schedule. This is unusual. What what brought you to the decision? Hey, I'd like to give this a try. He, how did it come about? Did you approach Josh? He told us way back when that he sort of told you last spring, hey, come on over. But when did you take this seriously? Um, so this is something that nobody knows except me and my mother. Uh, when I was young, I always, uh, my mom made me write affirmations. Mm -hmm. And so one of my biggest affirmations was to be a two-sport athlete in college. Um, and I started that in about fifth grade. Um, so it's just crazy that it's now happening now. Um, but uh, this all came about with Coach Josh Eilert when he had came to recruit my younger cousin, Jasper Johnson. He's your cousin. We were talking about that a little while. Uh-huh, yeah. He's, relation. Yes, uh, he's my younger cousin. Um, and we uh, went to high school together my junior and senior year. Uh, and I, he had came down, watched the practice, and um, he loved the way I competed. And, you know, um, I met him introduced myself, and we just kind of carried that relationship all the way until I got down here for football. Um, and I just checked in every time that I came um, came down. Um, he invited me to a hoop session that they had in the summer, uh, competed in those, and I, I, I loved the energy, loved the vibe that I got from it. And he was like, um, after football, if you're still interested, uh, you can come by. And so after football had ended, enjoyed the um, bowl game win for about a week, uh, and then I cleared it with Coach Brown. That was fine with him. He gave me the A-OK. -okay. And, you know, I told Coach Eilert, it's a go. Let's do it. What's it like being a, in, in high school, mm -hmm. concentrating on football in a state that is religious for basketball? basketball. Yeah. Um, it, it's not crazy different at all. Like, oh, I play football. Like, nobody's really looking at me. It's nothing like that. Um, but I will say... Um, it is tough being recruited from that state because a lot of guys are not um, heavy on it, if that makes sense. Sure. Uh, you know, because we are, I always say we're a basketball state. Right. You know, basketball is a really big thing down there. Um, so I wouldn't say it's like anything bad or anything too much different. But in uh, high school football, was high school football. Yeah, that was kind of my. Concerned with football. I mean, in high school? Yeah. No. So that's another thing that nobody really knows. Okay. Um, I didn't start playing football until ninth grade. Okay. So uh, I've always been a basketball kid. Okay. Um, well, so, that makes sense. That yeah, that. yeah, I've always been a basketball kid. Uh, so, yeah. So at some point later in high school, then football became yeah, you just – Yeah, it did. Um, yeah. So I'll give you all the background on that. So ninth grade, I went to – well, I lived in Nashville, Tennessee, from second grade all the way to tenth grade. Okay. And I went to a private school named Father Ryan from my freshman to sophomore year, um, freshman and sophomore year. And the football coach there, um, Coach Rector, he, uh, he was like, man, you have to come out and play football. You're too athletic. Um, and I was against it at first. I was like, no, coach, I came here to play basketball. And that's that's been my dream. It's been my vision. Um, but he was like, man, I'm telling you, like, uh, you can definitely you can definitely come out and play some football. And the, an AAU teammate that I had currently at the time, his dad had became the strength and conditioning coach, Coach Sharp. So um, he was like, man, you're a power five football kid just by your, uh, the way you move and how athletic you are. And that's where it kind of just changed. And that's when uh, it got in the way of, like, me uh, training for basketball, how I usually do. And football became sort of like the main priority, and that's how it's been ever since. What's football been like for you here? Obviously, your, mm -hmm. your playing time very limited, but right. – Workouts, everything. What you expected? Harder, easier? What's football been like? Uh, as far as lifting, it's oh. definitely it's definitely been harder, but it's um something that I'm kind of not scared off from, if that makes sense. Uh, oddly enough, the trainer that I do work with, um, outside of like West Virginia, he uh actually got trained um by Coach Joseph, Coach Mike Joseph, when he was at Notre Dame. Um, so those workouts are similar. Uh, but it's nothing that, 
you know, that I'm like, oh my goodness, like I do not like this at all. It's definitely tough. Definitely pushes me and is improved my body in a great way. Were you in spring ball this past spring? No, sir. Oh, okay, all right. No, sir. I was a summer enrollee. Okay, all right. Yeah. There was a basketball player on the football team. Yeah, that's what I heard. Trying to make a train. I was wondering if you uh-huh. ever talked to him or uh, okay. yeah. not as big as Jimmy Bell. Yeah, that was yeah, yeah. I, 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 uh, I definitely heard that. He was like a lineman, I think. He was yeah. going for lineman. Yeah. Yeah. So trying to do both now, I mean, because there's great opportunities at safety right. coming up. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you can just ignore football right now if you <laughs> want to win that job. So how are you doing both and in, in still concentrating on football? Um, You know, like I said, with the schedule mm-hmm. uh, and, and just my work ethic included into my schedule, mm-hmm. this has become like a lifestyle. Uh, so, so the concentration level has just been the same steady. Um, and like you had mentioned with the position and everything, like we still have, uh, two really good guys at safety, uh, Aubrey Burks and Anthony Wilson. And those two guys are, um, two guys that I, I love to learn from. Um, and so that situation will work itself out, but those are really two, two guys that, um, I, I love learning from. Um, but yeah, like since this has become a lifestyle, concentration has just been the same. Cat, free. Uh, free, free, safe free? with Anthony okay. Wilson. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're on the road there, Texas, this past week. Yeah. Uh, the Texas game obviously didn't go the way right. anyone wanted it to, but the last five minutes, you know, Josh looks down the bench, says, you know, get in there. What, what, what was that moment like for you? What, you know, nervous or what? Man, what? Ner- anything past nervous. I was super nervous. Uh, um. Of course, like you know, the much as much work as I've been putting in, I've been waiting for the opportunity. But it's just when you first uh, get into the action, especially with their starters still being on the floor, uh, definitely nerve wracking. But um, I think it definitely uh, prepared me for future. Um, you know, now I'm, I'm more relaxed. Even in practice, uh, when I practice with the guys, you know, they're. You know they're they're here for a reason. Those, those guys are really good basketball players. So even going against them in practice sometimes seems a bit much. But now it's like I'm kind of relaxed now. Like all right, I'm here. You know what I mean? So definitely nervous first first time on the court. Yeah, yeah. And that's what the guys was telling me um, when I came off the court because I was um, nobody knows this as well. I was very disappointed um, just on myself because I was so nervous and I was trying to tell myself relax, but it's like I couldn't. Right. Um, and the guys was like, man, listen. Our first game, you don't want to know about our first game experiences. So it was just like, it's normal. So, yeah. Welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah. How did you end up at West Virginia? Your, your basketball coach is a pit guy, right? Uh-huh. Uh, are you, first of all, you related to him somehow? Um, No, not by blood, but that's my dad. Like, he's been there ever since I was born, and that's who I see as dad. So he didn't yeah. badmouth West Virginia to uh-huh. you during the recruitment? How did you end up at West Virginia? Uh-uh. Um... So my recruiting process was interesting. Um, I had first committed to Ball State going into my senior year. And then um, more of my film was getting exposed. And uh, <laughs> I remember uh, Coach Neil Brown, no, it was Coach Shadon. Coach Shadon Brown had, uh, was about to stop by the school, and he knows uh, my head football coach, uh, Dennis Johnson. Um, and Coach Dennis Johnson was letting me know that, hey, West Virginia is going to be here um, soon. And so I was like, okay. Like, let's see where this goes. Um, I know Coach Adon had seen my film. Um, he had talked to Coach uh, Dennis about it. They was like, uh, now nah, we want this kid. And, um, so that kind of – that was later, like maybe two months before graduation, if I'm not mistaken. And even before that, I changed from safety to go play receiver at Western Kentucky. And I was like, I'm committed to that. And then later, that's when the uh, West Virginia situation happened. And uh, I kind of got in this sticky situation of, you know, Am I going to Western or am I going to West Virginia? And so um, um, I definitely, you know, since I was a little kid, wanted to be in Power Five, either basketball or football. So that's um, that's that was the opportunity that was presented, so I had to take it. Is there a difference between football shape and basketball shape? A thousand percent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a thousand percent. Because, you know, in football, you know, like, after a play, you get about five, five seconds of, of, of a breather. Um, getting the plays, getting the signals from the sideline, um, but in basketball is constant. I noticed that in uh, playing in, playing at Texas, uh, about three three times up and down the court, I was done. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a difference. Yeah. 
definitely a difference. You still talk to Jasper not much. I know he's at a prep school now. Uh-huh. So how good is he, and how, how much do you talk to him still? Man, I just got off the phone with him yesterday. Uh, Jasper, Jasper's really good, really good. Um, if he sees this, he's probably going to use that against me because I tell him he, he's not that good. <laughs> um, but, no, he's really good, man. Like, uh, how he moves with his body is crazy. I've been trying to learn that from him, even though I'm older than him. Like, sometimes he, he seems like – I'm telling him, like, Jasper, you're stiff. But he's like, bro, it works. I'm like, how? Um, he's really good with his, his shot, obviously. His handles is crazy. It's like – He's just a different a different kind of guy, a different kind of basketball player. But he's always been like that. He's always been in the gym late nights, even before um, schools were even coming after him. And so now you see that hard work paying off for him. When you were talking earlier when you were a little kid about how you wanted to play two sports mm-hmm. in college, uh, that really goes against the trend where right. a lot of kids, everyone's focusing now in high school and right. you know, they pick up one sport. Um, why was it important to you to play two sports? in college? Um, my mom was uh, very big on me dreaming and accomplishing anything that I wanted to dream about. Uh, so when I was like, you know, mom, I just want to play two sports, whether that be basketball, football, or basketball, soccer. That was my third sport was soccer. But basketball had to be included. Um, but no, um, my mom was really big on that, you know, like manifesting and, and accomplishing anything you want to. So uh, when I realized, you know, Basketball is going to be my thing. And then high school football became it. I was like, that's it right there. Just going to be basketball, football, and let's see if I can do it. Um, and that's kind of – that was just kind of – it's just something I dreamed about when I was younger. You got a hell of a soccer team here too. <laughs> yeah. Give, I mean, nah, nah, Coach Neal yeah. probably won't go for that. Nah. <laughs> nah, he's not going for that one. Nah. No reservations from Coach Brown about letting you play both? I mean, did he uh, – you had to have a conversation with him, you mm-hmm. said. So how would that go? Did he – Tell you, I don't know if it's a good idea. What, what did he say? Uh, no, nah, Coach Brown. Uh, he actually surprised me when we had our conversation. Um, he was just like, uh, he's like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, yes, sir. Um, he was with it. Um, he was a hundred percent for it. He was like, man, just as, as long as you make your workouts, I'm, I'm fine with it. Do your thing. Um, and that was kind of relieving for me because I was honestly, I was nervous about having that conversation. You know, like I said, that was something I talked about since I was younger, and so like. If he were to say no, like, it would be what it is because football is the main priority. But, you know, still that little kid in me is just like, yeah. So he was, it was very relieving for him to be on board with it. Like, Clarification on your name because uh-huh. I think in recruiting you were known as uh, Aiden Nelson all the time. When, when did Tagaloa come in? And are we pronouncing it right? Is it yes. Tagaloa? Yes. Okay. Uh, my mom has been on bad on me about this uh, because my, my uh, on my birth certificate, my name is Aiden Nelson. Okay. Um, the Tagaloa part comes from I was like, Mom, I just I just want to add it. Um, I wanted to add that because I'm uh, I'm mixed with Samoan, okay. um, and so uh, on both sides of my family, there's really been no one to um, get to the point that I've gotten to, whether that be college or athletically. Um, and so I felt like carrying both sides of my family, I felt like representing that, and so I just wanted to add Tagaloa to it. So Tagaloa Nelson. On a football note, mm-hmm. quick one, kind of off topic, but uh, what big news in the video game world that they're going to have one. If you get an option, will you scan your likeness in, and how does that feel? Uh, yeah, it feels good. Uh, I talked to a lot of uh, a lot of my friends from back home yesterday about it. I asked them if they was going to play with me uh, when it comes out. Uh, all of them said no, but I think that's a lie. Uh, <laughs> but I'm definitely, I, I'm definitely excited about it. Um, you know, because that was a game that I played. I played when I was younger, NCAA 14, and uh, they never came out with a new one. And then now it's like, it's back. So um, I'm excited for that. It's like it came at a good time. It came at a great time. 14, that was the end of the Yeah, that was the end of it. Yeah. So you get a commitment from your basketball coach to come to the Pitt West Virginia football game this year? You, I'm sorry, say one more time. Did you get a commitment from your high school basketball coach to come to the Pitt West Virginia football game this year? And who would he root for? Um, yeah. Uh, so he actually came, he came to the one, the one that we had last season. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he said, he said he was going to paint himself half and half. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, no, don't do that. Please don't. He ended up not doing it. So, uh, he said anytime uh, Pitt plays West Virginia, um, he's going to always paint himself half and half. And I don't know what type of comments or remarks he's going to get for that, but that's on him. <laughs> 
blue and gold. So you yeah, can't true. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Like, they're both blue and gold. So. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.